you wouldn't believe what I went through to learn how much sleep I actually need every night. My freshman year of college, most of my friends were business students and we all had some sort of side hustle. One night I went to this networking event and the speaker at the event actually said, you can train your body to perform on five hours of sleep a night. 18 year old me was like, bet. I'm gonna train myself to survive on five hours of sleep a night. And I did. I consistently started getting five hours of sleep every night and I was proud of it. I thought it was really cool that I could stay up till 1 a.m. working and then be at the gym by 6 a.m. the next morning. Obviously this didn't end well. Because I was so tired, I started taking a lot of pre-workout before going to the gym. By 3 p.m. I would need another boost, so I'd drink an entire monster energy. This is what I looked like when I started getting five hours of sleep a night. This is what I looked like one year later. According to the Mayo Clinic, getting less than seven hours of sleep a night on a regular basis has been linked with poor health, including weight gain, having a body mass index of 30 or higher, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and depression. Long story short, I ended up having a severe anxiety attack that lasted a week. After visiting urgent care, I was given a heart rate monitor and told not to take it off for three weeks. Since then, I've tried to be a lot better with my sleep. Recently, I began to wonder, how do I actually sleep at night and how much sleep do I need to perform at my best. I came to the realization that I have no idea how I sleep at night. To build some intuition on how I actually sleep, I decided to run a simple one month experiment. The first thing I did was buy a fitness tracker to track my sleep. I chose to go with the WHOOP 4.0. Quick disclaimer, the WHOOP 4.0 is not a medical device. It's a consumer wearable designed to give you a baseline of information. So please take all the data I show with a grain of salt. I then proceeded to track my sleep and answer these three questions every day. Question one, what did you do in the two hours leading up to bed? Question two, what was your last meal of the day and how long before bed did you consume that meal? Question three, when did you consume your last caffeine for the day? A few things to note about how Whoop calculates your sleep needs and your sleep score. Whoop recommends a bedtime based on two things, your strain for the day and how early you plan to wake up. Whoop gives you a sleep score based on the percentage of your recommended sleep that you achieve. So if Whoop recommends that you sleep for 10 hours and you only sleep for eight, then your sleep score for that night would be an 80%. I started answering all these questions on Thursday, May 11, and I stopped answering all these questions on Sunday, June 11. Observation number one. For me, it's quite difficult to get good sleep while traveling. From May 13 to May 22, I left the US for a work trip in Colombia. We stayed in really nice hotels throughout the trip. Despite that, my sleep score steadily declined while I was gone. From June 9 to June 12, I traveled to Washington State. As you can see, I slept significantly worse on this trip than I do in my own bed. This made me realize that when I travel in the future, I need to take extra care to make sure that I get good sleep. Observation number two, caffeine after 2 p.m. is a no-go. This might seem pretty obvious, but caffeine after 2 p.m. really messed with my sleep. Highlighted are all the days where I had caffeine after 2 p.m. What's interesting is that if I were to omit all of these from the data set, my sleep score would have averaged 93.5%. Of all the days that I had caffeine after 2 p.m., my average sleep score was 76%. Of course, there are a lot of other factors at play, but I thought this was pretty interesting. Observation number three, I get my best sleep when I haven't been looking at a screen before bed. I'm definitely addicted to my phone. Most days I wind down by checking social media or watching TV. I found that my best nights of sleep were when I chose not to watch TV or be on my phone leading up to bed. According to WebMD, blue light messes with your body's ability to prepare for sleep because it blocks a hormone called melatonin that makes you sleepy. Highlighted are all the days where in the hours leading up to bed, I was either watching TV or on my phone. It's a little embarrassing. When I wrote down all the things that I did in the hours leading up to bed, I would get pretty self-conscious. There would be this moment of like, ooh, I don't want anybody else to know that I watched YouTube shorts for an hour and a half before going to bed. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with doing these things, but I realized that I'd rather do things that set me up for a better night's sleep and that are maybe a bit more beneficial. So how much sleep do I actually need? It varies, but it's usually about eight hours and 15 minutes. It really just depends on how much exertion I put on my body throughout the day and how stressed out I am. For me, sleep really is the new coffee. I feel so much better when I get all the sleep that I'm supposed to and my whole day just goes better. I have more motivation, determination, and I make much higher quality decisions when I actually get a good night's sleep. Here are a few things that I took away from my 30 day experiment. 
Consistency is key. Going to bed at the same time, consistently avoiding caffeine in the afternoon, avoiding self-destructive behaviors, and replacing them with constructive behaviors. Instead of doom scrolling, maybe I could read that book that I've been wanting to finish. Now that I have a baseline understanding on how I sleep, I plan to systematically improve my sleep. Make sure to follow along to see what I try next. I'll see you in the next one.